Hey everyone, I'm Jason Honor. I manage the archives in the museum for Martin Guitar, and here we are in the museum at the Martin factory in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. There's a lot of Martin guitars out there in the world, and today we're gonna to talk about what might be the right fit for you. When a lot of people think of the acoustic guitar, that's what comes to mind, the D28. Just because so many musicians have played a D28 throughout the history of popular music isn't gonna make people wanna buy them. I mean, certain people it might, but what it comes down to is just the sound of a D28. It's that iconic acoustic guitar sound, that wide waist, the big body, uh, the rosewood back and sides, the spruce top and ebony fingerboard and bridge. It's just that classic combination that people look for. The first D28 was built in 1931. Originally, D28s were a 12 fret neck to body joint. So in 1934, Martin changed all dreadnoughts to a 14 fret. So it was a slimmer neck, it was a longer neck, and that's where you really see popularity of dreadnoughts take off. And so that's why that's, that prime period for vintage D28s is really 1934 through, you can really say 1969, uh, because the back and sides changed from Brazilian rosewood to East Indian rosewood that year. I think the average person wouldn't be able to tell Brazilian rosewood from East Indian rosewood. It takes you know, somebody that's listened to a lot of vintage guitars to tell the difference. But there is just that love affair with Brazilian rosewood because when you talk about Brazilian rosewood, it's what Martin used on all rosewood guitars up until 1969. They didn't even mention what type of rosewood it was. You just knew it was Brazilian. In 1964, the factory we're in now, the Sycamore Street factory opened, and it, that's when it starts. So production switches from hide glue to more modern wood glues. And when you look at the, the golden era pre-war guitars, those are all hide glue construction. So a lot of people think that factors into the sound. Then you get different binding material. You go from Ivory to a Boltron binding, which is a harder plastic. The switches in the pickguard go from a tortoise pickguard to a black pickguard. And then eventually, uh, a couple years later, you see the rosewood bridge plates start being used. So it's a heavier bridge plate. It doesn't quite allow the top to vibrate as, free, as freely as a maple bridge plate would. Really, your bracing changes happen in the 40s. Martin does forward shifted braces until 1938. Then they use rear shifted bracing from 38 to around 1957, and that's when we arrive at what we considered standard position. 1944 was the last year for scallop bracing. Nineteen thirty-seven, for some reason, is just kind of that prime year when it comes to vintage D28s. For some reason, you know everything aligned, and these are just some of the best-sounding D28s ever built. And so these models have all of those original features that you look for. So you look at the fingerboard, it has the diamond and square inlay, has the herringbone top inlay, which I mean, this, this inlay, uh, Martin started using that before the Civil War. So, I mean, it just goes back to the 1850s. You know, obviously your ebony fingerboard and bridge, and then Brazilian rosewood back and sides. And then you have a one and three quarter inch nut a modified V-neck, and this has forward shifted scallop bracing. So with that, you're gonna get the most boom and volume you can out of a, a D28. This is an HD28. So this is more in line with uh, a 1937 because you're gonna get the herringbone top inlay, the diamond and square fingerboard inlay. Uh, this has forward shifted scallop bracing, has uh, ivoroid binding, has the tortoise pick guard. Uh, I mean, this really has pretty much all the elements that guitar has. I mean, this is East Indian rosewood back and sides, which, you know, doesn't make it inferior to that. It's just a little bit different sound. The open gear tuning machines to give it that vintage look. So if you're looking for a guitar that's as close as possible to a 1937 D28, this probably would be the best guitar for you. When we reimagined our standard series, which this guitar is in, we changed the neck profile on everything. So this has a modified low oval with a high performance taper. So it starts out at one and three quarter, 
but then it doesn't get as wide. So it's a slimmer profile down the neck. So it is very comfortable to play. I mean, a lot of people refer to those old 1930s necks. You hear the term, it's a, it feels like a baseball bat. Some, you, you need larger hands to get your hand around it and play it comfortably. But I think more people find this neck profile co uh, more comfortable, obviously, than a modified V and the old low profile neck that we used to use on the HD28. So this is a 1960 60 28. Yeah, so you're gonna have a standard position non scallop bracing. You're gonna have a 1 and 11 16th nut width. More of a rounded V kind of, not that modified D, it's a little more rounded. You're still gonna have Brazilian rosewood. You're gonna have a Sitka spruce top on this guitar, whereas I don't know if I mentioned it on the 37, that would have been Adirondack spruce. So that's another one of those. Uh, people look at when they're buying a vintage guitar or sometimes a custom guitar, that's an upgrade they wanna make. A lot of people feel Adirondack does allow the guitar to be a little more expressive. It might vibrate a little bit more, maybe get a little more volume from an Adirondack top. This guitar uh, shares more features with our new D28. So if you look at uh, the binding material on it, the pick guard, things like that, it's gonna be more similar to the, the new D28 where the HD28 is more similar to the 1937. So the differences between uh, the HD28 and the D28, I mean, obviously this does not have herringbone. So this is uh, an alternating black and white Boltron binding style that Martin, when they wouldn't be able to get herringbone anymore because they were sourcing it from Germany and because World War II, you know, United States was not doing business with Germany at that time. So they borrowed uh, the inlay from one of their arch top models and transitioned that over to style 28 guitars. So that's, you know, obviously when you look at it aesthetically, that's one of the big differences. Now, sound wise, this has standard position non-scalloped, where the HD28 is four position scalloped. So this is gonna be maybe a little more balanced. You might not get as much bass response. You're still gonna get a lot of volume from it, but maybe not quite as much bass as the HD28. On the fingerboard, this has dot inlays, uh, which was another transition that happened in the 1940s. This is East Indian Rosewood, so very similar to the HD28 as far as uh, construction goes, tonewood wise. East Indian Rosewood back and side, Sitka Spruce top. Similar open gear tuning machines, and uh, if you notice, both guitars do have this cool uh, diamond volute carved into the back of the headstock. So, I mean, if you're, if you're looking to capture the sound of, say, like a 1960s, 1970s singer-songwriter or folk star, I mean, I think this is probably the perfect guitar that you'd want to look for. This is a 1937 D18 that was owned by James Taylor. Uh, he used it as his touring guitar in the early 1970s. When you look at 18s, they're gonna have dark binding, whether it's uh, a tortoise like this has, or uh, a more modern guitar would have a black Boltron binding. Uh, but the biggest difference is obviously the back and sides. So an 18 has mahogany back and sides, and a 28 has rosewood. And that's gonna, that's gonna give you a different sound. Uh, an 18 is gonna have a little more mid-range. It's still gonna have, people describe it as a dry bass response. You're still gonna get bass response. It's still gonna be loud, but it's not gonna be quite as bassy as a D28. When you're looking at uh, a Style 28 and a Style 18, a Style 18 was a little less expensive, uh, not just because of the back and side woods, but you'd have a little less inlay on the top. The fingerboard, uh, you didn't have as much inlay on the fingerboard, just some simple dot inlay. The tuning machines that were used on a 1937 D28 would be the same that uh, were used on a D18. It was just an open gear Grover. One of the things that people ask is if there's a size difference between a D18 and a D28, no. If you see a Martin and it's a D18, D28, D35, D45, whatever, it's gonna be the same dimensions, the body. They're the same size guitar. It comes down to 
uh, the woods used in the inlay appointments. So with our authentic program uh, in our custom shop, what we do is we take this guitar, this exact guitar, and we try to make one as closely as possible. And that's what an authentic is. We use uh, similar construction methods, similar uh, building materials, glues, all of it. And that's where you get the authentic. We take an x-ray of the bracing just to see how it's laid out and try to position it exactly like it was on the original. So if you want to save yourself several thousand dollars, the D18 Authentic would be the way to go. You know, that guitar is going on 80 years old, or actually 90 years old. That UV exposure, it's going to darken the wood. So originally, that would have had a clear gloss finish. Would have been, I mean, even in this, this guitar, this top is a little darker because this has an Adirondack VTS top. What we're doing there is we're uh, taking an Adirondack spruce top and using a process called uh, torification, and just it changes the cell structure and makes a new piece of wood more like an old piece of wood. Because one of the things about, yeah, we can try to build a guitar as closely as possible to an actual 1937 D18, but to get that sound, that's one of the most difficult things. So we try to use elements like a VTS top to try to get us there, and with that, we get as close uh, as ever to a vintage sounding guitar and a new instrument. You know, if you're a, a bluegrass player, you wanna play bluegrass, you know, 18s have been using bluegrass. Obviously, if you're a Kurt Cobain, you're a Nirvana fan. You're a fan of Elliott Smith. They both play D18s. Hank Williams, if you're a country music fan. So you can go throughout the history of popular music and find guitars that have played guitars similar to this. This is a 1930 OM45 Deluxe. Uh, Martin only built 11 of these before they had to stop production. I guess they had problems sourcing the materials. Uh, so it's pretty much, you can say, the rarest flat top we have in our museum. I mean, since there were only 11 of these built, we're not 100% sure if all the necks are shaped this way, but this, the neck on this guitar, it's uh, slightly asymmetrical, which gives it a, a little bit different feel. The middle part of the neck, where you usually have on these a V, it doesn't line up exactly right down the center of the barrel of the neck. So it kind of drifts as your hand goes down. So it allows, when you're going down the neck, your hand to naturally turn over. So we, it's something we discovered and uh, thought it would be great uh, addition to our modern deluxe series. And we just call it the vintage deluxe neck profile. This is a D45 Modern Deluxe. So this was a new addition to the Modern Deluxe lineup uh, this January. And so Style 45 represents the flagship of Martin Instruments. In them you find pearl inlay around the top, the back, and the sides. Uh, the pearl inlay on the fingerboard, I mean pretty much all the way up from the, the nut down to the body. So this is a little different than say a, a D45, the standard series where, you, where you're gonna see CF Martin inlaid in pearl on the headstock. This has a style 45 torch inlaid on the headstock. When it comes to the modern deluxe, you, you do get a lot of modern build elements. You have a Sitka VTS top, the liquid metal bridge pins, uh, a carbon fiber Adirondack bridge plates, you know, sandwiched together a protein glue. So there's a lot of modern build elements in the modern deluxe series, but you get a vintage deluxe, deluxe neck profile. So in the modern deluxe series, you get styles 18, 28, 42, and 45. So we have, you know, a lot of the standard series styles represented in the modern deluxe series. 
some people might shy away from a vintage guitar just because of the way the neck's constructed. You don't have an adjustable truss rod in there. Well, in the modern Deluxe, you get a, you know, a ad two-way adjustable truss rod. The playability might be a little bit better because it's a newer instrument. On newer instruments, uh, the action's set a little lower. Yeah, you do get a vintage feel uh, from these guitars, but there's definitely a lot of modern, f modern features built in that players would like. So this right here, this is a 1927-217. And what the 217 was, it was Ma a Martin's first all mahogany guitar. Uh, it was introduced in 1922. During the first years of the Great Depression, this guitar represented about half of guitar sales for Martin. Just because it was their lowest price model. Uh, as you can see, it's a smaller guitar. It was thought of as a student model. What happened after was that they started building different sizes. So then you saw 0017s come out. Uh, Martin did introduce the 0015 in 1940, kind of in line with uh, the 17 series. It was all mahogany. It had a um, satin finish on it, which the 15 still do. So it's just a, a little different aesthetic between the 15 and the 17 back then. Now our 17 series has have spruce tops where the 15 series still retain mahogany tops. You do get a different tone from a mahogany top. It, it's a little bit denser than spruce, so it's not gonna vibrate as much. So it's gonna be a little uh, more mellow, a little warmer sounding guitar. You're not gonna get quite as much projection. So these guitars do record very well though. The 15 series really is the ultimate value for guitars coming out of our Nazareth factory. But you know, you put it side by side and it's gonna go through the same process as that, a 28, an 18, all of those guitars go through. Some elements are different, you know, a little bit different neck joint. Uh, the bracing is, a, is slightly different, but I mean, you're getting an all solid wood Nazareth built guitar. So this is a triple, triple O 15. Uh, this was Martin's largest size until the Dreadnought came out. But I mean, by today's standards, it's not a big guitar. It's, I mean, I, I find triple O is very comfortable to play. I mean, the, the, the 15s, it's all mahogany. So you have mahogany, top, back, and sides. You notice on these, there's no binding. So it's, it's a simple look. And some people like that. They don't want the aesthetics that uh, inlay or binding give you. Uh, these instruments have rosewood fingerboards and uh, bridges, open gear tuning machines, which we use on the majority of our models now, give you that uh, vintage look. I mean, if you just want a guitar that sounds great, I mean, the 15 series, it's hard to beat, especially for uh, the, the price. This is the SE13E. So something that we came out with a couple of years ago. Uh, it was actually the best-selling acoustic electric of 2021. So this is kind of a, another in a long line of great creations that the company's come up with. And what really sets this guitar apart is the linear dovetail neck joint. So if you look, it pretty much removes the heel and gives you unlimited access all the way up the neck. Uh, something else that's uh, different about this is it's a, actually a 13 fret guitar. Usually guitars are 12 or 14 fret. So even though it's a long scale, it brings everything closer to you. So it feel, almost feels like it's a short scale instrument. It does have fine koa veneer back and side. So it's you know very beautiful tone wood koa. Sitka spruce top, uh, ebony fingerboard and bridge. And you notice the profile on this bridge is a little different. It doesn't have the same wings as our standard belly. So when you rest your hand on it, it's a little more comfortable. The pickup system, this is a, a Fishman MXT in this guitar. So it has an onboard tuner, uh, volume tone control. Something else great about this guitar, it has a uh, low profile, what we call it's our high velocity low profile neck. So it's a uh, Another of our asymmetrical neck profiles. The Road Series are built in our factory in Navajo, Mexico. 
uh, represent a great value. This is a SC13E special burst. So this has zero Cody back and sides. It's another uh, a fine veneer. If you're uh, somebody that plays a lot of shows a year, whether it's coffee shops, arenas, whatever, and you're looking for a guitar with great playability, great sound, uh, packed with great features and great looks. I mean, the SC 13E, you know, definitely is a hard guitar to beat. So this is a uh, DX1E Macassar Burst. So it's solid Sit Sitka spruce top with the burst finish. The back and sides on this are HPL Macassar. So Macassar is ebony. So uh, this is, HPL is a high pressure laminate. It's a wood fiber composite. Now these do have uh, solid wood necks, something that we changed in 2020. So. In the past, we've reimagined the standard series. Well, in 2020, we reimagined the X series. So any of the models that have a solid wood top also have a solid wood neck. Yeah, all of our X series come standard with a uh, Fishman pickup uh, inside. So volume and tone, it's the Fishman Sonatone. So when you're looking at the uh, ultimate affordable Martin guitar, it's something from the X series. Uh, this is an LX1E. So the LX, it's a, a modified single O body. Uh, it's a three quarter size guitar. I mean, if you're just starting out playing, you don't want to make a huge investment in the guitar. I mean, these are great models because, you know, they may be a little bit smaller, but you do get a real guitar feel from them. They have a, the good sound for, for the, size of the size of the guitar. Uh, they're also great for kids. There was once a real musician who, Play this guitar exclusively. Sold out Wem Wembley Stadium, the first solo act to ever sell out Wembley Stadium. We built three signature models for him of this this style of guitar. Oh, Mr. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> yeah. <Mr. Ed> Sheeran. <laughs> it was affordable, and he was a smaller guy, I guess. It was comfortable, and he just really liked it. Him and his loop pedal, you know, they, that's all he played with back early on. If you're looking for an instrument at a lower price point that lives up to the legendary quality of Martin, then either the LX or one of the X-Series guitars might be perfect for you. Or, I mean, if you're looking for something that you want to travel with, maybe you don't want to take your D28 to the campground, you know, to the campsite or whatever, play uh, around the campfire with it. So an X-Series is a great alternative. That's a great way to torify your guitar, am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Natural torification.